the poetic image is that of a stone falling in water. And imagine it's falling, 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 falling. And the water in which the stone is falling is bottomless. So it's falling forever, falling forever, falling forever. And the water in which the stone is falling is falling along an underwater cliff. And there's little protrusions along this cliff. And every so often, the stone lands on one of these protrusions and pauses in its descent. And in the movements of the water, it rolls off and it continues on and on and on and on. Now imagine you are that stone. And imagine we're all falling forever into God. And imagine you momentarily land on a little protrusion where you get to a place where you say, you know what, I think I'll stop here. Uh, set up shop and get my bearings. Settle in. The dark night of the soul is the process of being dislodged by love from the perception that the point you've come to is deep enough for you. You see that? We come to a place of realization in love. We come to a place of self-knowledge. We come to a place of uh, a sense of what life is about. And we pause there in kind of a reflective, subjective experience of that depth of presence to life. And the self that lives there imagine it has the final say in who we are. It's got all this marked out, got it figured out, it got its bearings. You go study theology, become a godologist, write books. <laughs> See? And then uh, you fall in love, or your mother dies, or you have terminal cancer. You're, you're utterly taken um, by the look in the eyes of the one who suffers. And you are dislodged from the ability to live on your own terms, and you continue on in the descent like this. And um, so then the dark night of the soul then, is um, like the divine strategy of um, artfully um, dislodging us from anything less than an infinite union with infinite love as being enough for us, as, as, as our, our, our destiny, as destiny.